thoroughfare, full of tales at every twist and turn. First referenced in 1478, this historic street continues to mutate as it awaits its new fate. But for now, let's stop and investigate. We used to go to a shop in Churchgate. Every now and again a woman used to buy a lot of shoes from the factory. And there were odd ones and you used to have to go and pair them up the best you could. When it came down church gate, it was like an ape. But when it got a skipping rope, it was like a fairy. My father opened up a shop in Churchgate called Apex Car. It was the shop that every little boy in Leicester knew. Rising high above the cluster of bricks and mortar, St Margaret's Church dominates this quarter. Built just outside the Roman walls, this Grade One church is a focal point as you wind your way along this lane. Today, the ancient church continues to perch. It's time to deviate to a discreet lane, a side street that's easy to miss, yet this lane is no political abyss. This sleepy, quiet street has a royal combat connection that deserves a closer inspection. That close lane has got a real atmosphere to it. That wall there is actually quite old, and the great meeting dates from 1700. But if you're there on a dark, slightly windy night, it's very atmospheric. Queen Elizabeth I donates a piece of real estate to the free men of Leicester. Situated on Buck Close Lane, men and boys remain resolute to learn the art of the long bow. From the young and tender age of seven, these boys would walk along church gate, grasping their long elongated bows. With their eye on the target and a steady hand, the young men rotate as they begin to acquire a fatal skill just off church gate. Fast forward to the 18th century and the Age of Enlightenment. It's time to take another twist and turn just off Churchgate. Now this brick building was bang up to date. A chapel that will stand the test of time, but these bells strike a totally different chime. Opened in 1709, the chapel is the oldest complete brick building in Leicester providing a sanctuary for free thinkers. It's the Great Meeting is the earliest brick building in Leicester. It, it's a very good building. It dates from 1700. It, and it's a Unitarian chapel. The Unitarians have had a, an awful lot of influence in Leicester uh, over many, many years. The rebellious spirit of Churchgate begins to germinate, just as the Industrial Revolution cultivates. Homegrown businesses that evolved in this street now take a back seat. Brick by brick, factories rise up, textiles, hosiery, boot and shoe take centre stage as the ever-expanding workforce scuttle and bustle along Churchgate. Well, Leicester at that time was the boom city of the country, really. You know, those factories then are the marvellous places. There was such camaraderie. There was um, trouser making, jackets, all in suits, bow ties. I remember packing bow ties in boxes and all that sort of thing. And I did um, dinner jackets, um, mostly putting the silks on the lapels of dinner jackets and that sort of thing. You know. Inns, bakeries, toy shops, shoe shops, pharmacists, cafes and clock towers appear and disappear at an ever-expanding rate. Churchgate is no longer second-rate. We used to go to a shop in Churchgate. 
<laughs> Every now and again, a woman used to buy a lot of shoes from the factory, and there were odd ones, and you used to have to go and pair them up the best you could. Two left feet or two right feet. My father opened up a shop in Churchgate called Apex Craft, and it was uh, a shop that sold model aeroplanes, model boats, model anything. It was the shop that every little boy in Leicester knew, <laughs> because there was always something in the window to attract, and it was on the way down to the bus station. And then we used to go in the bakery to get a loaf. There were two brothers who used to bake it. And then we used to take the Sunday dinners, put it all in a tin, put a tea towel over it and take it and have it baked. It just cost about thrums or sixpence and they'd bake the old dinner for you. 63 Churchgate. Now this was a hot plate of social debate. Known once as the fish and quartz, this inn was known for more than just its gin and sin. Travelling circuses would house their animals in its yard as the locals stood guard, eyes wide, mouth gaped as elephants, zebras and monkeys stride slowly along church gate. And we had all the animals from the palace when they brought circuses and things to the fishing court in church gate. We had such a big yard and stables. It was the Royal Italian Circus. They brought the elephant one time and, the, and it wouldn't stop in the stable without the zebra there. And we had another one come, an elephant, and it walked from Nottingham. Tons of circuses used to go there. All the animals, when we used to feed them through the fish and quart, the elephant used to put its trunk through them, used to give it buns and bread. And as night falls, down in its basement, a boxing ring is surrounded by eager punters shunting and grunting, cheering on their chosen man. As the bell sounds, the referee holds up their gloves, heads held low in anticipation as these heavyweights await their fate right here on Churchgate. And we also had the boxers at the fishing court. Uh, Morris Gazelle, the Frenchman. Joe Woods from America. Donald McCorkindale from South Africa. When it came down church gate, it was like an ape, but when it got a skipping rope, it was like a fairy. The Industrial Revolution begins to slow, yet the people flow at an increasing rate along church gate. A new bus station is built, Bernie Inns are now the new guilt, and Bruciani's famous ice cream sodas and lemon buns keep the little ones smiling. But there's a new twist to this quarter, which will affect its bricks and mortar. A digital revolution is beginning to cultivate right here along Churchgate. Mays ran two or three electrical goods shops, white appliances, fridges, toasters, things like that, but they also, importantly, did TVs and hi-fi. So music, cassette players, it would have been at the time, turntables. So if you were looking for anything like that, you'd do a circuit round Leicester and Mays would always be on it. We used to go to Mays Electrical just to look at the stereo equipment or drool at the tech that was on offer. I can remember the electronic shop, Mays doing the TVs and things like that. But I remember going in there looking at hi-fi separates and TVs when TVs were gigantic things. I also remember a video game shop. I think that must have been there back in Super Nintendo days, so we're looking at the 90s. And then, with a blink of an eye, the 21st century is upon us. Leicester's diverse city is thriving. Polytechnics mutate and grow at an incredible rate. The Premiership is won as the entire city celebrates that incredible run. And then, of course, the dig of the century. A king's skeleton becomes the city's greatest accessory. Leicester's spotlight is in full flight. And then the virus hits, and the city is locked down again and again and again. The high street already on its knees is desperate for some expertise, a spark, an idea to bring the heartbeat back once more with an almighty whack. A new revolution awaits to breathe life into this historic street. It's fate unknown for now, but ripples of ideas are beginning to appear. So I'd love to see places like Churchgate, Churchgate in particular, have a more public 
creative spaces where you can show work, where you can do workshops, where people can come together who wouldn't normally meet. There's real potential for it to be a, a people's place where you can go and perhaps sit outside a cafe and spend time meeting friends. That history of people knowing it as somewhere to go to Bruciani's or to have a drink could continue. So I think the future for Churchgate is probably looking more rosy at this very moment than it has done for absolutely ages. A soundscape for Churchgate contains a number of interviews courtesy of Leicester University East Midland Oral Archive.